Welcome to our six in the series of 10 free talks to get your business ready for 2021 and beyond. These have been set up by the Crafts Council and funded by Crafting Europe. For those needing a translation, we've got Ukrainian translation available. We also have a Q&A function. So for any questions that you might have during this conversation, please do pop them in our Q&A. We are recording this webinar and this will be available next week on the Crafts Council YouTube channel. Before I welcome our digital manager, Emily Collins, I'd like to set some context of why using Facebook could do wonders for your craft business. The rationale. I've asked many makers recently, why do they, do they use Facebook for their craft business? I've had mixed responses. Some have said yes, and they have no idea how they made it successful. Some have said sometimes they might link it to their Instagram or do the occasional post, but not really that engaged. And others said they're not sure it's worth the effort. Soon we will hear from Emily, who will offer tricks and tips on, very vi on this very viable social platform. To you all though, I want you to consider the why, why Facebook could work for you. Here is an incentive. As of June this year, there are over 50 million Facebook users in the UK with roughly 2.7 billion monthly active users worldwide. So the research, as I always say, factor in the research into your business routine. For Facebook, there are three areas to look into. One, the user experience. Who is using Facebook well and how are they managing this? Two, how can you apply this learning to support your own craft business? And three, research into the mechanisms behind Facebook to support your activities. And Emily will be showing you why and how shortly. Marketing. Facebook is about marketing. Think back to our previous talks, how to identify your brand values, how to identify your ideal customers. Once you have this basis in place for your business, you'll then be in a better position to use Facebook more effectively. It's all about clear, concise, consistent, written and visual communication structure. It's all with the marketing. You do need a structure in place and this requires both time and budget. Understanding who you are and who your customers are will help you be more specific with your marketing and therefore maximize the budget you have available. Planning. Once you have the structure in place, now's the time to plan. What content do you need to prepare? Could this be for an event, a new collection, or sharing the creative process of a new piece of work? Like Instagram, Facebook is a social platform. Therefore, your approach is about engagement with others. Connections, the who. Your plan is in place. So now is the time to be specific with your approach. From your research, you may have identified types of hashtags that work well. The other users you think who would be interested in your business. And other brands you wish to connect with or be associated with. Being specific with your approach when running your campaigns or your regular posts will help you achieve your intended connections. Finally, the future, that long game. My advice, or my mantra as I put it, live for the now, plan for the future, learn from the past. In relation to your business, 
we recommend that you set out some short and long-term goals. A short-term goal could be testing out different types of interaction with your audience, whether you do video content or still bit images with different hashtags, what works for you and feedback and reflect back. Another could be trying to link up with other interested brands, brands that follow your own values. Either way, set some goals and specific targets to measure these goals by to see if you have managed to make an impact. Always remember though, to reflect back and so that you can see how far you have come. I will now hand over to my colleague, Emily Collins who will be sharing some insight, really amazing top tips and tricks into how to make Facebook work for you. Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. So I'll just get my slides loaded up. Okay, so Facebook, um, love it or love it, Facebook does continue to be an essential tool for any sized business with one, over 1 1.8 billion daily active users around the world. Um, a, face, a business without a Facebook page these days is akin to a shop without a sign on the door. Um, this is your key way of generating leads, attracting new followers, and really just expanding your audience and generating more revenue. Um, so today's talk will cover account setup, audience targeting, campaign formats and bidding, engagement tactics, reporting and insights, and some third party tool recommendations. So let's dive in getting started, the account basics. So some facts and stats. Did you know Facebook is actually not just one platform? Facebook is a mother brand that owns several core products, including WhatsApp, Instagram, and Facebook Messenger. So, you know, as public sentiment rises and falls, and we have debates around um, politics and privacy and, and fake news, um, Nonetheless, if you're using Instagram, you are in some way using Facebook and it's really wise to have a business account on this platform because it will underpin, underpin so many other marketing activations. Um, with over 200 million small businesses registered, you're in good company. There are lots of free and um, really useful, quite visual resources that you can find on Facebook's um, help pages that are really geared towards small businesses and startups. As Caroline said, there are 2.7 billion monthly active users globally. 59% of all social users are reached through this channel and 79% of Facebook users only access on a mobile. So really important to think about optimizing your content for a small screen. And they estimate, estimate around 19 and a half hours of average monthly usage. For comparison, Instagram is only 10.3. So if you've not done so already, let's build a business page together. Starting from scratch, you'll need to log into your personal account and visit facebook.com slash pages slash create. You'll see a template like this one on the right, and you can enter your company name, category, and offer a brief description of your product or service. Upload a profile and a cover image. Edit page info to add contacts and any opening hours and extra info for visitors if you are a physical space. Um, and add a button to set up a call to action such as shop now or contact us. This will appear on the top of your page. Some do's and don'ts of setting up your business profile. Do optimize your images for all devices by using the correct spec. Uh, these are provided on the right here. So if you're able to screenshot, then now would be the time, but you can also find these on Google or um, we will share these slides around after the talk. Choose a visual that represents your product or service. It's okay to not be completely literal, but don't go for something that's too abstract. This is your first impression and it should, um, it's also a space that you can kind of campaign and change regularly, but it should always feel like it has your kind of core brand uh, personality and there's some consistency for followers. And aim for consistency, but also give your audience a reason to follow you across multiple channels. It's highly likely that your customer is visiting your Instagram and your Facebook, maybe your Twitter, maybe your YouTube and, and your website. So give them a reason to go to each platform um, and try to avoid repeating the same content and the same images across all places. Don't use a cryptic username. Don't rely on abbreviations and don't promote your page before it's ready. Take your time because first impressions really count. 
if you're toying with having a personal or a business account and maybe merging the two, um, we would say that it's probably best to go with a business page. This will allow you access to the full suite of tools and analytics and paid features that are accessible only to business accounts. Some creatives do prefer to kind of blur that boundary between business and home, but before doing so, we would say it's best to ask yourself the following questions. So, will my personal updates be relevant or um, distracting to a business audience? How will new customers find and shop my products? Do I use the same tone of voice and language liaising with my customers as I do my friends and family? And also, will my well-being and privacy be affected by merging those work-home boundaries? I'm sure we can all relate after the year we've just had. It's really nice to be able to clock in and clock out. Um, so, yeah, as I said, we would recommend a business page. Um, you can add this to your existing login. Um, Facebook also has some checkboxes that allow you to copy your personal info and you can actually select which friends, followers, photos and videos you'd like to transfer. Just visit facebook.com slash pages slash create slash migrate or um, you can just search for that in their resources. Um, and also remember Instagram's shopping feature does require a Facebook business page link. So if that's something you're considering down the line, it's best to kind of get all your ducks in a row and do this now. You may have also heard of Facebook shops. These are a really easy and cost effective way for you to create a digital storefront, even if you don't have an e-commerce site. So all you need is a business page and something to sell. You can manage your product catalog and even sync it with a third party app. So if you're using Shopify, that has a, um, a kind of API plugin. You can sell to a global audience with parcel tracking, <clears throat> excuse me, and customer service all in one place. You can create unique product links for use in adverts and tagged content such as Facebook Live and Instagram Stories. And you can feature a collection of six to 30 products, set up promo codes and even notify your followers when new inventory goes live. You can also offer a native mobile experience with a faster load time and seamless cross app functionality. So your, your users will be able to jump from Instagram to Facebook using shop buttons. And also there's um, direct messaging. So if you want to manage your customer service uh, in a kind of live chat format, then that's really handy. You can access sales and customer insights to inform your future business decisions, for instance, reorders. And you'll also become discoverable in search tabs across Facebook and Instagram. So picking up that extra spontaneous traffic when people are looking for keywords associated with your product. So now that we've got our house in order and we're all set up, we can talk about strategy, defining your audience and your objectives. So to define your, audience, uh, your objective, take stock of your online presence and decide what problem your Facebook page is trying to solve. For example, you might be trying to build brand awareness or improving your reputation and trust. Maybe you're trying to increase attendees to a very specific moment, like an online event or a studio tour or a masterclass. You could be trying to generate new leads and revenue or converting interest into real action on your web store if you're noticing some abandoned carts um, or lots of page views, but they're not quite turning into real purchases. You may be trying to retarget your existing customers and drive loyalty. And you might be trying to diversify your audience. So if you're trying to reach um, a more luxury customer or um, an international, international crowd. You can also connect with potential clients, stockists, creative peers, and the press and media. And you can reach more nearby locals with geo-targeted ads. Um, let's say you have a, a stand at a, an upcoming uh, market. So whatever your objective, it's really important to think about plotting that into some kind of conversion funnel. This one here on the right is pretty standard for Facebook and digital marketing as a whole. And you'll see there are four stages. We start with awareness. This is your, your target customer having some general understanding of, of who you are and what you do, but they haven't taken any action yet. Every marketing, uh, every Facebook advert or kind of marketing activity that we run is trying to push users through this funnel from one stage to the next. And then at the, eventually post um, conversion, we reward that engagement and hopefully turn customers into advocates so that we kind of generate more word of mouth and, and uh, gain even more traction. Once you've defined your objective, you can define your audience. Facebook allows you pri a primary audience and a secondary audience. 
So the primary audience are the people you want to reach with your marketing message the most. They're the core business because they are most likely to take action and they're likely to share some overlapping characteristics and three key areas. Facebook will allow you to target users using these same three areas. So have a think about your, your usual customers' demographics. Um, that might include age, gender, location, income, occupation, and education level. It might include interests, like products, topics, activities, and their values. And it might include behaviors such as lifestyle, hobbies, preferred brands and media sources. Where do they get their information and why do they trust it? And sports, entertainment, music genres, and so on. Your secondary audience are the other people who are unlikely to become a loyal repeat customer, but do have an occasional interest or a reason to engage with your business. Um, and so to bring these to life, we're going to do a bit of persona building. If you've never worked with personas before, it's actually quite fun. Uh, and it's really just a way of humanizing the data and making sure that you're um, creating quite a rich story around who your customer is and, and why they would come to you. So we can, we can say that a persona is a holistic profile of your target customer. It will clearly define who they are and the motivations or barriers that influence their behavior. By thinking critically about your target customer's lifestyle needs and emotional drivers, you can develop really effective messaging that resonates at the right time on the right channel. So let's take an example here. Um, this is our recently graduated potter working in South London. Um, they use sustainable materials and they've tested the waters at a local market. They might have a few stockists, but it's all quite low key. And they can say with some confidence that their core primary audience are ceramic collectors. So these are female pottery enthusiasts, 25 years or older, based in London. This customer has some disposable income that they can spend on homeware and they actively seek out independent brands to support. We know that they might pay a slightly higher price tag if they believe the company to be ethical. So that brand story and the process of how the product came to be really matters. And they have some interests such as cookery and eco-conscious fashion, most likely to be found on Facebook following the likes of made.com, maybe a local bakery, um, Greta Thunberg, upcycling groups. And so really telling a story around who your primary audience are can help you think about those um, different behaviours and uh, other brands that they follow in order to target them successfully on Facebook. That is, however, just one audience, and we would be selling ourselves short if we focus on only one customer. I'm sure you all have more than one strand. Um, and so let's think about who that secondary audience might be and break them down into two areas. The first here is a casual gift shopper. So for that same Potter uh, example, perhaps some tourists and commuters are passing through London and likely to know someone in that primary audience that is a big fan of pottery. Can we convince them to come to us and perhaps purchase a gift? Um, this customer might appreciate the product, but they've got less interest in the production and the story behind the brand, but they're still valuable to us. Uh, the third here is an aspiring potter. These people believe, why own it when you can make it yourself? They're much more interested in that experience economy. For these customers, it's all about getting hands on and they're most likely to be 35 years or older, local to South London and childless with some free time to offer in the evening um, and they'd like to gain a new skill. So the same example is now not just offering her a product, but offering some kind of um, workshop or masterclass experience. And this, this audience are most likely to be found on Facebook, following the likes of the Great Pottery Throwdown, our very own crafts magazine, and perhaps some local short course providers. So you can see how just very quickly with a simple exercise, we've mapped three core audiences into our Facebook targeting. And your challenge now, if you choose to accept it, is to apply this to your own business and to define free target audiences or more for your own Facebook ads. So now onto the campaign. Within Facebook, there is a platform called Ad Manager. Ad Manager can be quite intimidating. It's often thought of as a space that only agencies and kind of professional marketers use, but this is your secret weapon and it's available to anyone with a business account. So navigate to Ads Manager on the left-hand panel of your homepage. Check that your ID, your currency, and your local time zone settings are correct and select your advertising purpose and business info. Here you can also set up your card payment and your spending limit. 
And this will ensure that you'll only spend what you can afford. So if you're um, dipping a toe in the water of, of paid ads for the first time, and that's quite daunting, don't worry, you can set a daily cap or a weekly cap or a monthly cap, whatever timeline works for you and uh, not have any scary invoices land in your inbox uh, because you've um, perhaps overspent. Okay, and then you can familiarize yourself with the campaign, ad set and advert structure. You'll see here in this little um, infographic, the campaign is basically the, the mother, um, the label for all of your ads. This is your overarching objective, your business goal, and it's where you set your bid. Within a campaign, you can have an ad set. These have to be different per audience. So an ad set, we might have one ad set per um, audience example that I just gave. And within the ad set are your ads. This is what the actual user receives front end in their Facebook feed. And this is where you can place your custom creative. You can um, choose your messaging, add hashtags and so on and so on. And finally, you'll want to determine your placement, time frame, media, text and link destination. So what are we saying and where are we sending the user to? This is what that, that will look like in the back end of Facebook. So you can build your core audience into a saved view and come back to this again and again. So um, you're not having to build it from scratch every time you create a new campaign. And you can do this in audience manager or on the spot when you're creating something for the first time. Just go to that left hand panel, click add manager and then click create the screen button here and choose your campaign objective. Next, you'll set your spending limit. We've just put hundred pounds here as an example. And then your campaign budget, which is where you can break this down into phases, um, i.e. a daily cap or a monthly cap. Next, you'll be prompted to choose your schedule. And then also you can drill down into location and demographics. So you can see with that same Potter example, we've targeted London, we've targeted specific interests, and we can also even look at languages if we wanted to. Next, if you want to get a little bit more strategic, you might want to think about a lookalike audience. This is only possible with something called the Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel is a snippet of code that you can add to your website. And this code collects data on user behavior so that marketers can optimize their messaging and really meet the moment depending on where that user is in the customer, in the customer journey. So um, interactions you can monitor and get your website and Facebook page speaking to one another include um, expressions of interest. That might just be a cold lead, someone looking at your homepage and bouncing straight off. A complete registration like a newsletter sign up or an event booking. Um, perhaps someone's added their payment info or they've added to a cart or a wish list or they've initiated a checkout and abandoned cart and uh, left you hanging or they've actively looked for something on your site search or they've just had a, a, an interaction with your content. Perhaps they've scrolled through um, a blog post. So visit facebook.com slash business slash help and search install Facebook pixel and you can find more info on that. It's reasonably easy to set up, so don't be too intimidated that it involves a bit of web coding because it really is just a copy paste job. So now we can think about content and the various formats and placements. You may have heard of these terms before. It's a little bit of jargon, but we're going to break that down for you all now, left going left to right. So an organic post, what is organic? Essentially, it's any unpaid content that will mainly reach your existing followers. So it's akin to a Facebook status update to your friends and family, but really it's going to your existing business audience. So for example, a photo upload or a reshare from another account, um, a link to your own website, anything that's not been monetized. And you can still use this and have impact as a small business. Um, this is a great way to have everyday interaction with your followers. You can create a real sense of community with behind the scenes updates, work in progress shows, um, show and tells, I should say, um, Q and A's and also current inspirations. So perhaps you've got like a mood board or some um, aspirational content that you want to share to just bring your brand to life. It's not always product driven. It's just soft sell and it's kind of um, showing what's going on behind the scenes for you to reach a point of, of um, product sale. Okay, and then boosted is essentially an organic post that you've just put some money behind. 
Um, it's not the same as an ad. And so that can sound like a bit of a gray area, but to put it simply on your feed, when you um, post anything organic with a business account, you'll also be prompted to boost it. There's a little blue button that you can look out for. And that's quite a nice, um, quite casual way of just putting a small amount of money behind an existing post to get it seen by more people outside of your following. So this can be really useful when you're looking at things like user polls to gather feedback or you've got a competition that should have more entries, or perhaps you've got a really amazing piece of press that you just want more people to engage with. Um, it's worth putting even just 10 pounds behind your organic editorial content to get it seen by more people. Um, so when should you use it for your business? As I said, you don't really need full control over the advert and reporting for this kind of thing. It's really just um, taking a bit of a gamble and, and helping your organic uh, content go further. Paid advertising, on the other hand, as we've just explained, is created in Facebook Ads Manager, and this will show up in feeds outside of your following. So this is really useful when you've got quite a direct message. Perhaps it's a product shot and a link to your online store, or it's maybe a very targeted call to action around payday or um, kind of big seasonal moments like Christmas markets, um, or you've just been launched in a new gallery or a new store uh, stockist. And really, you can use this whenever your budget allows. Um, as long as you have a really clear objective and, and a call to action. So um, it's a good idea to use this when you're competing in quite busy periods. If, if it's particularly oversaturated and there's lots of noise in the feed, this is a way of cutting through and making sure your business gets seen. And here are just two visual examples. So on the left, we have an organic slash boosted post from the Crafts Council. You can see we haven't boosted this yet, but there's that blue button I talked about. And on the right, um, what a paid ad might look like promoting our gallery. So ad formats. Now we can look at how we actually set up our creative. So typically you're probably gonna go for a single image or a video or a carousel. There are a few other options um, that are specific to kind of mobile immersive experiences, um, but I think you'll find more kind of big players and, and commercial brands using that more often than even the Crafts Council are at this point. So a carousel can showcase up to 10 images or videos within a single ad and each image will have its own link, which is great. You can highlight multiple products, multiple angles of the same object, or even tell a left to right story about your brand by kind of tricking that scroll and maybe having one very long landscape that uh, users engage with to reveal more so Facebook can also optimize the order of these images based on their performance. So tick a, there's a tick box in the ad setup that will allow them to basically monitor which of your images is getting the most engagement and start front loading that when it appears in other people's feeds to hopefully get even more traction online. Single images and videos are a good idea if you want to stop the scroll and really grab someone's attention quickly with a clear and concise message. Videos that are 15 seconds or less do the best on mobile and your key info should appear in the first three seconds. We've all got very uh, small attention spans these days. Um, and you can see there, we've got a video from um, the Crafts Council behind the scenes of our gallery. Placement. So placement can be automated or manual and placement basic, in basic uh, terms is just where will your advert live? How will it appear on users' uh, desktops and mobiles? An automated placement will optimize your budget to make sure that your ad gets the most views possible. And not all placements will be available. It really depends on the format you've picked, i.e. a carousel or an image and video. So left to right, we've got an in-feed option. We've got stories. We've got a, an end of video, it's called in-stream. And this is basically an ad that appears um, at the start and finish of related video content from other channels. And then we've got an in, fee, uh, in news, I think this is called, where basically if anyone's familiar with the Facebook app on their phone and they're reading articles regularly um, through their news channel, your ad can appear amongst the text. And this is how that will look in the back end. So when you're setting up your ad, you can preview uh, once your media is plugged in, it would appear where this blue T is as placeholder. Um, you can preview how that same image and caption will look across different devices and different placements. So now on to engagement, this is your interactions and insights. 
So the algorithm is a bit of a mystery. And I think this is the number one question that uh, anyone working in social media probably receives is how does it work and how do we beat it? So an algorithm in Facebook's terms is a four factor ranking system to decide where and when content should appear in each user's feed. Its goal is to keep all of us scrolling on the app for longer and engaging positively with content that Facebook believes is relevant to us as individuals. So what I receive and what you receive will be completely different depending on our Facebook behavior. It's not chronological. So really important to move away from thinking if I post at a certain time of day, it will be seen. Uh, that no longer uh, works, unfortunately. <laughs> so we have to be a bit more smart about how we um, place our content. It's more likely to hi uh, score highly on Facebook's ranking system if it's relevant to a niche specific audience. So the more targeted your message and your content, the better. It contains meaningful interactions. An interaction can be a like, save, it can be a reshare, but it has to be active. Something like a video view um, wouldn't count as meaningful. Um, it's video or image led. We're all aware of um, digital disruption, like apps like TikTok um, and even Instagram's own Reels and IGTV feature. The more video, the better. And from the original source. So it's more likely to be shared if it's your own content, not a reshare. And also from an attentive business with a high percentage uh, of profile completion. So if your business account, going right back to the basics that we talked through at the beginning of this talk, um, is still missing things like a cover image or some business info, um, go in and tidy that up first before placing any paid ads. And also Facebook has got quite uh, good at uh, measuring clickbait. So avoid asking outright for any likes and being too explicit with kind of competition entries. Um, anything that reads as clickbait will be blocked. So what can you do as a business? More weight is placed on active metrics than passive. This is what Facebook counts as a meaningful interaction. So gain comments, for instance, a Q&A, um, offer customer service, refer a friend, encourage reshares, this might be a competition incentive or a collab with another maker, um, product reviews, testimonials, prioritize video, have a look at Facebook Live, we'll get onto that a bit later, and take time to interact with other business pages, for instance, um, creative peers, collectives, any organizations that you're, you're part of, also local events and, and kind of related press and media. And check your optimum posting time in your analytics. This can be found under insights. You can also bypass the feed completely and not worry about the algorithm if you put more time into stories, which is a bit like Instagram stories. It's just 24 hour real time video updates that will expire. Hashtags. Hashtags feel like they've been around for a very long time now, but it's still a uh, they still prove to be a bit of a blind spot for a lot of people. And we kind of throw lots of related words at the end of a caption and hope for the best. But if you um, plan ahead, you can actually really get a lot of extra traffic from hashtags. So I would say follow this kind of four step um, outline here with your own business. So to reach a wider audience of people interested in your specialism, be quite specific, actually tag the, the materials and the creative discipline that you work in. Then find appropriate hashtags by searching for keywords relating to your customer or your client. So this example here on the right, we have a jewelry maker that specifically works with um, kind of recycled, upcycled materials. So let's tag things like vintage, upcycling and other keywords, and perhaps wedding because the bulk of her clientele might come from um, engagement ring purchases. And then hop onto trending topics and community initiatives and don't be afraid to use an emoji. You can actually tag an emoji if you didn't already know that and it will link to related content under that image. Um, so for instance, this jeweler is tagging things like BBC, all that glitters, the TV show. You can be a bit cheeky and hop onto trending news and um, anything that's in the press at the moment that relates directly to your, your practice. And you can create a memorable tag for your brand and encourage customers to share their own content. But before you do so, check that it's ownable. So just do a quick search to see what else is already tagged with those words. Um, ideally, you want something that's brand new. Um, and then that's a way of just generating extra user generated content, i.e. your customers telling your story for you. And that will give you even more images that you can then reshare on your Facebook. And it's really from the horse's mouth. You're not telling everyone how great you are. You're able to let your customers tell that story for you. 
So Facebook Live is another great opportunity for engagement and it allows creators to engage with their audience in real time. It's much more authentic and it feels more intimate and visceral. And typically this receives six times more engagement than a standard video upload. So consider this your fast track to cult cultivating a community and gaining more page visits if your budget is too tight for lots of monetized ads. So all you have to do is head to your profile or your business page and then below create post, you'll see create live. Click that, you'll get a countdown and you'll be live on people's screens. Um, it can be a bit daunting the first time and I wouldn't blame anyone for being scared, but um, it's a. I think the more you use it, the more comfortable you feel. And actually the online audiences are very forgiving when it comes to this lo-fi kind of real-time video. We uh, Most of us are familiar with Snapchat and um, Instagram stories and TikTok these days. Um, there's much less polish and the material doesn't feel like a video campaign it feels like a real peek behind the scenes of the businesses you like before going live it's important to plan ahead so don't do this on a whim um, let your audience know you'll be broadcasting ahead of time with a status update i.e the date and time you can check you have a strong internet connection so wi-fi or a 4g 5g connection would be best find good lighting and a space free of background noise Prepare a catchy description detailing why you're live and what you'll cover. Tag related products from your Facebook shop so that they can appear at the bottom of the video as links. And smile, breathe and be yourself. There's no right way to do social media. This is um, meant to feel authentic to you and your company. During and after going live, make sure you've introduced yourself and break down what you'll be covering so that users know what they're watching because you're likely to pick up some stragglers who've maybe never seen your page before and are wondering who you are and what you do. Invite questions in the comments and remind new arrivals to join in. So maybe draft a little prompt that you can copy paste into the comments every five, 10 minutes to just remind people that this is a collaborative space and you're there for a conversation. So. Um, feel free to drop questions and um, opinions. Shout out those viewers by mentioning their usernames so that all the attendees feel really appreciated and welcome. And finish by reminding viewers to follow so they can be notified each time you go live in future. Make sure that nobody leaves your Facebook Live without uh, an action. You want to direct them to your business page, your Instagram newsletter, wherever suits. Just don't let them leave without something to do. You want that video kind of casual entertainment to convert into a long-term customer. And aim to respond to any missed comments post-event as the stream will live on as a recording. So I'd say within the next 48 hours, just take stock of any comments that you've missed and make sure to go back to them just as a, a caption. Okay, and now on to results. So you can gain really rich insights into your content performance, product sales, and audience reach by creating a custom report in Facebook Creator Studio, which is here on the left, and also in Insights. So it's up to you really which view you'd like to use. They both do the same thing, but Insights will, um, sorry, Creator Studio will let you see individual ad results. And that will look something like this. So you can see on the left, you've got uh, an overview of your reach, i.e. the impressions. So that goes beyond uh, engagement and kind of your direct audience. This is other people that may have seen your content kind of by accident. It's just appeared in their feed. Um, landing page views, cost per landing page view. So you can really get a cost per head and, and assess whether you're getting a good return on investment. And you want to do this again, perhaps with more budget if it's paid off. Um, and you can also preview the ad and see side by side, you know, what visuals and what kind of layout worked um, and get some quite detailed demographic data on age range, location um, and device usage. So if you've never digged into your Facebook reporting before, here's a quick step by step. You'll want to view your results at an account level to get an aggregated summary of all your activity. This will change over time, but it will also help you identify trends and patterns um, so that you can be quite savvy and, and target your marketing um, at key points in the year. And within ads reporting, you can also choose your preferred breakdown to view data by demographic, time, placement and device and select the metrics that matter to you. So if this is all brand new and you're not sure where to start with all of this kind of digital data jargon, um, Really, it breaks down into four categories. There's ad performance, i.e. how many people saw your ad, um, how was it delivered, um, 
and so on. And then engagement, which might include likes, mentions, video views. These are the real interactions with the content and conversions, i.e. did they click the link? Did they book? Did they add to basket? Did they follow? How have they, um, what have they become now that we're pushing them through that funnel? And finally settings. So objective, was your objective met? Did you spend all of your budget? So compare and contrast this with calendar drop downs and visual charts. You can actually compare to the same period last year or last week and hopefully see that growth go up. And you can click save new report and schedule an email update straight to your inbox. So once this is set up, it is essentially runs itself. Um, so you can have a weekly snapshot of your Facebook data in your inbox waiting for you every Monday if that would be helpful. OK, so we've, we've kind of come to the end of the slides now, but key takeaways, three things to think about. Build your Facebook advertising into your finances. A small budget can still attract big results. Anything is better than nothing. I think it's fair to say that a Facebook account with lots of content but no budget behind it is not really working. And I think even if you've only got five to ten pounds or you want to carve out some of your marketing budget for the year that would usually go on a physical stand because we've made such a pivot to digital spaces post-COVID, um, now is the time to think about Facebook. Also prioritize conversation to build community around your brand and you'll really improve your in-feed visibility. You'll see a massive uplift in your engagement when you're focusing on interaction rather than follower growth. And be brave, plan your first live video and watch the engagement roll in. Um, hopefully we'll have lots of new video content from our directory makers and attendees of this event uh, if you've uh, felt a little bit emboldened and excited after seeing that step-by-step. -step. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to take a sip of water and a deep breath and uh, invite my colleague Franny to come on and we'll go through the Q&A together now. Franny works in digital content and looks after our social media channels at the Crafts Council, so is very well versed on Facebook, Instagram and the lot. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Emily, and hi, everyone. Um, thank you for posting all of your questions in the chat. We've got some really good questions to get through. I thought I'd actually just begin with my own question, which is that, uh, you mentioned in your introduction that Facebook really divides opinion and that makers have experienced quite a few struggles when it comes to Facebook. And I just wondered if you could elaborate a little bit on that. For sure. Yeah, we actually reached out to a few of our directory members, um, hoping to have a real world case study um, to show you as part of this talk. Um, and usually, you know, people are quite forthcoming and would love to be on a, a web webinar like this. But it's um, proved difficult to find a maker that really feels confident enough to speak on their Facebook presence because it is such an impenetrable interface it's, and it changes so often. You know, just as you find your stride and you think you know what you're doing, Facebook will release a new update and that area of, of your business page is gone or um, suddenly it looks just very complex and it's nowhere near as user friendly as something like Instagram, which can all be you know managed on your mobile and, and is very visual. Um, so I think generally speaking, it's it looks like it's designed for agencies and advertisers and not for the, the individual independents and small businesses out there. But with some kind of key tips and tricks, which we've covered today, hopefully you can dip a toe in the water. And, you know, even if you're just running two or three ads in the next few months with a small budget behind them to get a sense of who your audience is as a scoping exercise from there, you can then, you know, build on that and turn it into a real um, campaign. That answer your question. <laughs> yeah, perfectly. Um, and on that, we've had another question talking about budget. Someone said they have very little budget, meaning less than £100. Can this have an impact? And is what you just said the kind of perfect example of how you should use it? Absolutely. I mean, even here at the Crafts Council, we don't put huge amounts behind our social media um, on Facebook because we can get quite a good return for, you know, maybe 50 to 100 pounds or even less. It depends on the message and who, who you know, we need to reach and the urgency. So I'd say go back to your objectives. What are you trying to achieve? If it's, um, you know, you, you've just launched a brand and you want to have more followers and your, you know, your real target is just growth, then even 10 pounds, five pounds behind what would have usually been just an editorial or an, uh, a piece of content you would have published like a personal image or an a status, um, just boost that post, put you know, what you can afford behind it and see what happens. I'm sure your engagement will go up. Thank you. Um, 
so lots of comparisons to Instagram and Facebook, which is what we experience here at the Crafts Council as well. Someone said, um, I have a page that I set up a while ago, but I tend to have more engagement on Instagram. So don't take the time to focus on Facebook. How could I use Facebook to differentiate from Instagram without repeating the content and auto posting? Mm, great question. I think there's a different expectation of Instagram. It's obviously very aspirational. It's eye candy. We don't want to be um, hit over the head with long captions and hashtags. And it's not always a two way conversation. It really feels like we're we're kind of telling the world what we want to tell them and hoping that the likes roll in. Um, And actually, Facebook can be much more community driven. So if you're not part of any groups already, I would recommend, you know, finding some Facebook groups that relate to your practice um, or your local area. Um, and really, you'll I think use that as a customer service channel, but also as a place to find you know peer to peer support and really get your work and your product seen by um, a wider audience that are maybe more invested. If they're following you on Facebook, it's likely that there's some kind of commercial intent. Whereas Instagram, it's often you know just beautiful visuals, and we all save content to revisit later in quite a passive way. Um, I think Facebook can actually be more of a news stream for you if you if you want to tell your brand story and have that two-way conversation with your potential customer mm. um another question we've had that i actually don't know the answer to this so maybe you will um is it true that after an ad campaign your organic posts are kept back with less reach by facebook to encourage you to spend again oh uh, interesting an urban myth yeah i <laughs> I can't say, you know, for sure, hand on heart. I think there's a lot of scepticism around Facebook and, you know, if they can woo you into spending money once, then they'll do it every time. I I would say put that kind of rumor to the back of your mind. At the end of the day, paid advertising isn't going anywhere. Facebook's not going to scale down. It's only going to scale up. And so if um, you are kind of on the cusp of maybe trying paid advertising for the first time, um, not doing it based on that kind of you know rumor is only going to hold you back I think just have a go and and see what happens Mm -hmm. um you're you know I don't think that that's reason enough to not have a go and it's it's we're probably going to hear that kind of rumor about every channel all the time as they grow and there is a lot of that probably happening in the background so maybe it's best to just get on board um (laughs) someone else has asked I'm taking part in a digital fair in September and I'm considering running a Facebook campaign. If I did ads, how soon should I start them and what sort of budget do I need? There's a lot of the advertising questions, aren't there? Yeah, well, it's just such a a grey area for a lot of people. Yeah. You know, we're all on the receiving end of Facebook ads all the time and it can feel quite overwhelming and spammy. Um, So I would say make sure that you've defined your audience and break them down, segment them as much as you can so that any advertising you put out is really targeted and doesn't feel like spam. It's not an interruption in someone's feed. It feels very, you know, personalized and and relevant. Um, And then the timeline really depends on your budget. So if you've got, say, 50 pounds and you just want to do one generic ad and just see what happens then I would say do a really targeted campaign for maybe a week prior to the event so that your um, message is fresh in you know people who may attend it's fresh in their minds really close to the event date but if you can afford to stretch that longer and you want to break that down into different um, audience categories then you know maybe have three or four ads you know or five ads one with 10 each one with £10 behind it for a slightly longer time and just, you know, slowly build up and have a bit more of a lead time. Um, It depends how hard sell and how kind of soft sell you want that message to be really. So um, have a think about what your objective is in attending that digital event. Do you want to um, just establish yourself as a thought leader and an expert in your field and have more eyes on you and and be booked again for future events? So you're trying to reach uh, a more professional kind of audience or, is it just uh, getting your brand name out there and t- converting that into web visits? Um, once you know your objective and who you're speaking to, you can crack the timeline. That's a really good point on the objectives because probably when it comes to advertising and what you want to prioritise, you probably want to go back to those business objectives that you set out at the beginning of your business plan exactly. and think about where the spend can measure against them. Um a couple of questions about audience. Would you say that Facebook has more of an audience than Instagram? 
Um, and this person has seen a lot of small businesses building more on Instagram than Facebook, which is something that we've seen a lot of as well. Hmm. I mean, generally speaking, Facebook is still by far the largest app around the world. And, and a lot of that is driven by kind of developing countries and also, you know, I'd say America and using um, Facebook as really a kind of gateway to the internet it's in the top I think it's in the top five um internet you know sort of web pages globally in as a whole not just a social media app you know it's up there with kind of google search as as your sort of portal into news and content from your you know personal community and from businesses so it's not going anywhere and I think I mean in terms of demographics the only growing demographic on Facebook at the moment is 50 plus but it's still by far the most used uh, app, even from kind of young teenagers, uh, even more so than TikTok. So no matter what you're hearing in the press and, and you know, seeing brands do in terms of um, establishing a very visually pleasing, glossy Instagram feed and lots of uh, kind of trend driven viral content that feels quite sensory and exciting on, on uh, TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, Facebook does seem to be that kind of go to for authoritative messaging and and actually generating kind of real sales and interest in your brand that converts into revenue and isn't just kind of um more casual followers that are enjoying the inspiration and, and that maybe they really vibe with your brand but they'll never purchase so I'd say I wouldn't cut it out you know it might not be your favorite to use and it might not be the core kind of pillar in your digital strategy but to not have one I think you'd be missing a trick so even mm. if it's just having a business page that if somebody searches for your brand through Facebook not a search engine you come up not somebody else um, you know it's just making sure that you are meeting the moment you're there when someone looks. Mm. And something we've seen on our Facebook page is that we get such higher click through from Facebook so maybe it could be somewhere that you don't necessarily focus on the shop but you can direct people to different content like exhibition openings and stuff like that yeah exactly maybe if your Instagram is if you're quite precious about your Instagram how it looks and making sure that that grid is very uh, consistent and aspirational and maybe lifestyle driven but you still need that way of just getting your web product pages front and center in front of a target audience um you know and I'm, I imagine personally speaking Instagram I'm always on my mobile Facebook I'm usually on my desktop I'm in a completely different frame of mind when I'm at my computer um, than I am when I'm just scrolling on my sofa so you know think about who that or who your audience are but you know at what point in the day are they receiving this message and why would they convert there and then um, I think using the right app at the right time is, is crucial Definitely. Um, we've had two questions come through about the, the connection between Etsy and Facebook shop. Mm. I don't know about this connection and it, I, I, it's certainly not something that at the Crafts Council we are um, au fait with, I would say. But um, do you know anything, Emily, about the connection between Facebook and Etsy? I wouldn't say I've personally used that, no, but um, Facebook shop has several integrations uh, like Shopify and I'm sure Etsy and, and probably a few more. So um, I, I would just direct you straight to Etsy and Facebook's own support pages. Um, I'm yeah. sure there are lots of free resources to help guide you through that process. And we will, um, like Emily said, share a list of FAQs at the end of the talk and, and try and point you to as many useful places as possible. Um, what else is there to ask you? What very simple question, what is a geo ad? Oh, <laughs> um, and Caroline's just joined us. So I think this will be our last one. Um, so, I mean, geo-targeting is just a fancy way of saying location specific. So um, if you want to uh, have an advert that's running um, in a specific area and it might not be the physical place you're in, it might be, you know, another country and you can actually drill down into city. You, know, you can give a mile radius on Facebook so you can be very specific. Um, it means that you can, you know, target users with uh, a message that's relevant to the physical space they're in. So, for instance, you've got a bricks and mortar store that's opening next week. You want to um, let locals know or you're going to appear in a um trade show in a different country for the first time and it's a brand new international audience you can let them know that it's the first time you're there and they won't have to pay for tracking and shipping they can come and buy their product in person so um geo-targeting is just location data Brilliant. thank you Emily no worries thank I think you
Thank you so much. That was absolutely brilliant, uh, Emily. And thank you, Franny, for um, contributing to those brilliant questions as well. So much content. And as it said in the chat, we will be sharing the slides and the recording of this webinar with you next week. Um, uh, brilliant. Um, and just yeah, on those takeaways, um, I really like the fact of having a strategy in place and doing your research, um, put some budget behind it and just test it, be brave, have a go and, and get yourself live on, on camera. Um, so thank you again. And um, if I can ask Tanvi to release our poll um, to hear your feedback, that would be great. And to everyone for listening, thank you for joining us today. Our next talk is on the 28th of uh, July, where if you're really stuck on how to work with clients or um, how to work to a brief or design commissioning, uh, come and listen in to um, our talk on making the most out of working with with clients and that's on the 28th of July um, without further ado um, we're going to bring this to a close thank you to crafting um, Europe for making this possible thank you <laughs>